Hey, how's it going? Oh, shoot. My set is trying to misbehave. Hold on a moment, please. Oh, um, actually, here, let me just remove this offending cord. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about the big hand. Okay, um, please look at some signs. All right. Well, <clears throat> it's been an interesting day. I'll tell you that. Where is my rose quartz? Uh oh, oh, there it is. Um, so um, I got started to do. Okay, this is not right. <laughs> Hold on a second. Alright, oh shoot, get out of the way, big flipping thing. Why are you not cooperating? Wait, please? <laughs> oh, what is your major malfunction? Okay, fine. You know all that hassle is because I didn't want the refrigerator to show. Fine, it's in there. It's gonna drive me insane. Er. <laughs> okay. Um. So I pulled two cards today, and the first one is from the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck, number eighteen. Eyes of the Eagle, rising above the fray. Interesting turn of phrase. Because I have something in mind <laughs> that I haven't shared with you yet. Uh, and the second card I pulled was from the Wild Unknown, do not open, and Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. The card I pulled was a golden egg. Oh man, I lost the page. <laughs> oh shoot. Well, no, I didn't. Okay, and the funny thing about this, this is a side note kind of a deal, but this happens a lot when I'm about, when I'm about to do this card reading business. Uh, like I'll go to, I'll pull the card that I need and then I'll have to go grab the two guidebook pages and they're in an unbound stack so a lot of times I'll pull it open just kind of trying to approximate where I think the number will be and it'll open to the number but this thing it happens too I was fumbling it trying to open it and it just sort of fell open where I grabbed it because I was going to drop it and it was the page of the card that I pulled so fun. <laughs> um, hold on a second here. Pages are all sticking together. And then, <clears throat> because I have an idea of what where I'm going, because of, well, I'll get to it, but I have an idea of where I'm going, so uh, it felt like a good idea to pull this card from my Rider Wade-ish, Rider Wake-ish tarot deck. Um, it definitely takes its keys from that uh, style deck, tarot deck. It's the Five of Pentacles. And uh, the reason I don't use these cards more is because I just don't feel confident in my understanding of them and they don't speak to me the way these do or my light seer deck does which is based on the rider weight uh sort of uh presentations of the suites of cards but you know it's different art um and i do a lot better with those like i uh, feel like i can work better with those but I don't know, like, these Oracle cards are just doing it for me lately, but, um, 
so like I was saying, I didn't understand uh, the just regular tarot cards as well as I would like to. And I'm mentioning that because this particular card, like it, I, just the meaning of it really escaped me. And then one day I was watching a reader, I think it was Chris Wren, and uh, something he said uh, made me re understand something. Cause I, I think it was him, but he said that it was like the card of spiritual strength. And I always looked at it like those poor buggers, <laughs> you know, they're having such a terrible time. And, you know, the, <laughs> the rich pigs, I'm thinking of the Arkham comics. He had a particular way of referring to rich people and it was rich, P-I-G-G-E. S rich pigs like he spelled it a particular way they were like very offensive or something is the vibe I got from him deciding to spell it that way well there was an emphasis for sure but I feel like that's who's sitting in the church and the feeling is as far as these people outside it's their own fault they didn't pull themselves up by their bootstraps and it's you know they're just the type of person that like deserves to be poor I feel like that is the vibe of the people in the church or that was my read of it and it still could be um I'm just getting real, real strong right now but what that reader said was that the people on the outside represented spiritual strength and I didn't get that for a long time and um, it makes sense to me now because it's like the people are all warm and probably wrapped in furs and fancy clothes and putting big donations in the collection plate I'm a Catholic or a, a lapsed Catholic so yeah there was a collection plate <laughs> And the collection box. <laughs> and so, um, there's like money and fanciness happening inside the church. And they're kind of like, I said, like above these other people, but it's a metaphor. So they're not necessarily out in the cold, literally, but they may be apart from like the general consensus in a way because they're not all concerned with the riches and the finery and because they know that there's more going on like under the surface outside of all the bright lights and incense and whatever all is going on inside of that church and they can have that I mean I'm sure the door's not locked they could just go over and get in probably I know I made it sound like it was like Studio 54 but it's a church so it would look real bad if they didn't let like the poor beggars in right but they don't need to go in there because they're not bothered by the lack of what's inside of the church and that is, I finally got the metaphor, that is what the spiritual strength is about. Like, whatever, we may be crutching and limping it along in the snow, like all, you know, half, almost barefoot. Or is somebody actually barefoot? Yeah. I guess they both don't really have, like, shoes. <laughs> so, um, that's, I guess akin to walking on uh, hot, hot coals, you know, and they're not bothered by it. Like, that is not the concern in their head. Like, they, I don't know what exactly it is, but it isn't their feet and it isn't what's going on inside that church. There is something more intangible, more ethereal happening that you kind of got to be in a certain state of mind to grasp and it isn't necessarily the whole riches and finery state of mind where that's like acquisition is your life like capitalism has become to this country in my opinion where like profit is more important than an actual life even though you need actual lives to run the machines that generate the profits just saying so, put that aside, and um, 
I'm going to read what the guidebook says about the eyes of the eagle, but let's take a look at the card first. <laughs> it's an eagle with a monocle and <laughs> I have, I just thought like, oh, that's, you know, monocles usually have some sort of adhesion thing and, or something to hold on to with your hands <laughs> and fingers you know, to place it and adjust in whatever. This eagle is not gonna have that. And so <laughs> I just thought of, there's the stuff that they attach like hair extensions with and you can do other makeup stuff with like stick on mustache or fake eyebrows. It's called spirit gum. <laughs> and I just think it's funny because I'm sure that this eagle is gonna be doing something or is in some way representative of spirit <laughs> so um but uh yes eyes uh, eyes of the eagle is the name of the card and the subtitle is rising above the fray uh I'm going to read the book and then I'll talk about my own interpretation of those phrases on there. So, um, number 18 is 9, and if you add 1 and 8 together, and I actually did take some notes on that. Well, let me read this first, and I, let me stay in order, kind of. So, Eyes of the Eagle. Protection, Inherent Trust, Rising Above the Fray. The eyes of the eagle offer you the gift of fireless, <laughs> of foresight, of firelight, <laughs> so you can see the foresight, <laughs> the skill of looking ahead. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll get to that. To see the unfolding of destiny before it all manifests as reality. Ooh, <laughs> seeing the potentials deep. The eagle's extraordinary vision allows it to spot the tiny miles from its lofty perspective as it flies thousands of feet into the atmosphere. In a similar fashion, you too can train your keen eye to discern the workings of humans. Eyes of the Eagle is an invitation to witness the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful, yet react to nothing. Act only to further your noblest calling. The eagle flies above all creation, all creatures. When it meets obstacles, it simply rises above them. Know that you are protected. You can fly high above the judgment slings and arrows and the darts of envy from others who may not have your great wings but are still arguing with pigeons over crumbs. <coughs> Too much air, too much oxygen. Let me have a drink of water. <clears throat> Trust that you are ready for whatever fortune has placed before you, even if you feel not yet properly equipped to meet its challenges. Your willingness to say yes to spirit <laughs> spirit gum <laughs> your willingness to say yes to spirit has nothing to do with how outfitted how well outfitted you are hesitating on the other hand will suck the air from under your wings and make you lose altitude you are now called you are called now to trust your heart and your instincts to move fearlessly and not waver the time is right and no harm can come your way if your motives are pure and you act outrageously. Oh, courageous, courageously. I think it's interesting that my mental autocorrect or my mouth or whatever's doing that. Well, I mean, I think that I, I, I often notice the word and think more about like the fact that that's the particular wrong word that my brain ended up choosing to say. I, I, 
I feel like I need to pay more attention to what those words are and what they might mean in context to what I'm saying, even if they're like, they're, they're the wrong word, but they're just wrong because they're not the word that I'm actually reading. <laughs> I don't know how my brain is doing that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read what uh, the guidebook has to say about this golden egg card. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna point out that it is nestled in uh, this woven nest of what looks like uh, some kind of grasses, like maybe, it could be oats, could be wheat, something, but you can see these, uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. seed pod thingies here, uh, along with just plain stalk, there's some, like, fruited areas. I don't know why that was important to point out. <laughs> um... And so, this is a golden egg. I'm just going with associations here, but geese lay those, don't they? And you can see there's a geometrical pattern on there. Wow, it's the color of a perfect soft-boiled egg yolk, actually. Um, I will add more about that pattern to the... Uh, information box. I don't think it gets mentioned in the book here, but I could be wrong about that. Um, golden egg geometric pattern. I mean, it, it, the pattern itself has a name, like a mathematic mathematic <laughs> mathematic Mathematical, mathematical. Ram lemon ding. <laughs> Sorry. I, I believe it has a mathematical name though. That pattern. Um, and so it, in all likelihood, it has some sort of significance to the egg and the card in that. So. I'm likely going to miss that right now. I'll see if I can pick it up and get it in the information box when I'm done uh, recording. Um, also, the color suggests that there may be an embryo in there and is sort of moving around. I know that my lights are doing things and changing uh, tone. It's... All I do is turn on the light switch, so I don't know why it's doing that. Um, <clears throat> out here, here, here goes reading from the book. Golden Egg. <clears throat> Message at the center of the heart, the unstruck sound. Within the golden egg, there's a precious sound deep within that sound resides a message. Oh, sorry. <laughs> within the golden egg, there's a precious sound, period. <laughs> Deep within that sound resides a message, also period. The sound cannot be heard nor the message discerned until we retreat from the noise of everyday life, period. The magical essence of the golden egg needs warmth, quiet, and time to unfold. No rushing, pushing, or grasping. Find a place of deep and restful ease, perhaps through yoga nidra or, or nidra rather, or meditation. If you do not yet have a meditation practice, take some time for introspection or contemplation. When the mind begins to settle and the breath is calm, ask the question that weighs heaviest on your heart. Staying open to any response you hear. Engaging with the energy of the golden egg is an advanced practice. It requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with vulnerability. It re oh, it requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with our with vulnerability. I get it now. When a feeling of tenderness or gratitude arises from deep within you, 
you know that you're well on your way. Your chest may swell like you are seeing an old friend that's been away for a long, long time. Listen to the message they've been waiting to tell you. Something in the egg. Promise. McBaby, look at it's wearing an M emblem. An M emblem. Mim, mim, mim. <laughs> I think the things that I find funny are strange <laughs> that that's funny to me. So there's a final <clears throat> little bit uh, to say about the golden egg and the fourth chakra. The subtle essence of the golden egg is nestled deep within the heart center of the fourth chakra. This chakra called Anahata is the home of the self or soul. By bringing the mind into the center, we discover a portal to the most intimate and luminous space. It is said that our inner guide sits there in deep meditation waiting for us. Anahata translates as the unstruck sound. Okay, so all of those, to me, link together in a certain way, and I was taking some notes and um, kind of got on a roll, and there's, I, I just found that, uh, like, some synchronicities other than the page, the book opening to the page and that type of thing, although those were part of it. So, um, I forgot to put my ring on. <laughs> it's important, gotta have that. Um, so, um, if you've been following along, uh, watching my videos, then you will know that I have been having a journey with anger and trying to not have it as much and really the issue I'm dealing with it with right now is that I'll be <laughs> like calm like I am right now and then like something will happen although it won't happen like just the first time it takes like two or three times and the particular thing that I'm talking about well I, I wrote it down so just know that, like, that's something that I've been wanting to treat and manage and I don't know about cure, but, you know, work into some kind of condition where I'm not just, you know, insta-crazy mad, you know, and so I had this video that I had come across and it's from a channel that I watch fairly frequently and this particular one of theirs I saw it and it was anger and self acceptance I believe is the title and I thought when I saw it the first time which is probably almost a month ago now I was like that sounds like something I need to watch but I didn't watch it right away and I kept putting it off and it was like waiting for the right time even though I know that when it comes to stuff like this there's not really a right time to do that like fixing your anger after <laughs> 59 years <laughs> you still haven't figured out to get that under control <laughs> working on it so um <clears throat> that. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to read more reading. I know you love that. It'll go faster because I wrote it. <laughs> like, I have an idea what, I, what it's going to say. Anyway. Um, but I'll start. Still, This is still part of the reading, by the way. Because it all kind of links together in my mind. So n the numerology of number nine. Spiritual growth, wisdom, and completion. Desire to serve, uh, oh, desire to serve, uh, period. Powers, patience, and harmony seeking. Spirituality, unity, 
uh, and the ability to see clearly. Um, I'm I'm gonna go with uh, like a sort of a foresight kind of a thing. That is probably why I got so excited about the seeing the timeline, the potentials. I feel like that's the same thing. I knew they were gonna coincide, and I have to pause this for one second. I'm sorry about that. I just felt my stomach starting to go south, and I wanted to grab some papaya extract tablet. So, um, right. Uh, seeing the potential. That's the last thing I said. Twin flames. How nine is affected uh, with twin flames. Or what it represents, whatever. Reminder of spiritual mission involved in connection. Harold's new journey with twin. Okay, so the twin flame thing, if you don't know what that's about, briefly, in a single person, in, a, in an individual, you have masculine and feminine energy. And when you balance those two in yourself, it creates a, sing a third one. Two go together and create a one, but it's, I guess, a three energy. Um, <clears throat> also, there is a physical manifestation of that twin flame where you have a masculine and feminine partnership of two separate people and they don't have to be it could be a same sex couple just it's not that the masculine has to be like a male genital wearing man it could be a woman with masculine energy like lesbians, like one I guess will be the woman and one will be one will be the masculine and one will be one will be the feminine. Same is true as far as I can tell with also gay men. And the dynamic is all over. Like it, it's there in heterosexual relationships too. Um it could be like a male a traditional male and female couple, but one of them will be more dominant over the other. It's not unusual. I think what's unusual is the balanced pair. <laughs> um, and as far as that part about starting a new relationship with your twin, well, the thing about twins, when there is a coupling pair, that is an eternal relationship, a, a, a union that breaks apart or drifts apart or separates however through death or maybe the people are born into the same like era but one's you know born when the other's 90 or something you know or they don't even have to be born or alive together at the same time on the same planet dimension at the same time um, that's all I'm going to say about it, but, um, well, no, it's not, <coughs> but <coughs> if you were to meet your twin in this life, <coughs> you, and you found one another, because it's not guaranteed, I guess, and, and the finding one another and getting to the point where you realize that you have this opposite number, that takes a whole lot of self work and care and education about all of this spirituality stuff and getting control of your vibration and your temper and all those kind of things like the self care and the self work um, but it's not like the same as I guess seeing someone you're attracted to in a bar and you get along really well and it's like deeper than that although it could be that that is what you're dealing with under those circumstances 
or it could not be <laughs> it could be just that you click and anyway look it up if you're interested in what twin flame is all about um if you haven't heard of it i'd be very surprised it's a thing but it's got there's a lot to it so you got a nutshell <clears throat> uh angel numbers pretty much says the same thing the twin lives within ourselves i talked about that already okay on to the next part or I'm, I'm telling you there's a paragraph happening here i guess anger triggered by some past crap okay got that got that one on my own <laughs> unworthiness at the root i hadn't considered that it does however really shorten my fuse if i'm screwing up whether I was unaware I have to be, or, oh, it, whether I was unaware and have had to be informed of it, or I'm aware all along, worse, you don't notice my frantic tries to fix <laughs> whatever I've screwed up. Um... Or, you know, being informed sets in, sets a panicked rodent within or, like, a yappy lapdog uh, into, like, a violent shivering, you know, like when they little animals get all scared and, you know, start making noise and shaking and freaking out. Um, depending on, you know, uh, with each uh, repetition of notice of my failure I'm talking about making mistakes and getting like that angry about it like I was talking about earlier uh, especially depending on the tone like it, it, with each repetition of my f failures especially depending on the tone can and delivery um, and depending on who's delivering it <clears throat> can make me uh, make more mistakes. Something I passionately prefer to do without anyone looking on. <laughs> passionately would prefer to do it without anyone looking on at me screwing up, which adds to my anxiety because really I want to get it right on all of the levels. <laughs> Yours, mine, ours, everybody, everything just learned a tip uh, toward adjusting the temperature temperament is tying it to the first time it hurt me duh upon hearing that and it's sinking in though I can't give a day but I can pull an area of time when the me might have and this is curious been first broken me oh what a pregnant statement. I'm looking back to childhood and thinking, this what could this kid have anything to be broken over? That's something I can work with. I wonder what's there. It seems like obvious stuff. I can tell you, though, one thing, it's not just that isolation... Oh, it's not just that isolating the moment is the only challenge. It's also the accelerating from zero to crazy. Like, of course, the anger is rooted uh, into something, rooted to something in the past. Because it's so deep-seated and it's so hard to, uh, uh, like, un to uproot and get a handle on like I after all this time I'm still just less so because I'm aware of it and I've been working to fix it but it's like still all these years I still just a ah! um like I said not immediately but like three or four times of someone repeating me repeatedly telling me that I messed it up or I'm doing it wrong or any version of that just uh, really not good <laughs> Uh, does not help me perform the task any better. I can tell you that. 
Uh, and then I got onto this other thing that I've been thinking about for a while, and then it made sense with this, and it's broadcasting. So I would say that, yes, I'm doing that here, definitely, in the, like, media sense, but also what I'm doing while I'm on here is a variation of what I learned in uh, about... Okay, so broadcasting didn't start out as something to do with, like, television or anything at all to begin with. I believe what I read was that it's a term that came from the Amish community, which then came from, like, Germany first. So it goes back a ways, and it refers to planting seeds because you <laughs> throw them broadly outward with your arm. You cast them out. That's where the term originated. And so in this instance, I had seen that video talking about uh, anger and self-acceptance. And it talked about obviously going back and getting to the root of your problem. Like, you know, it's somewhere in your childhood. And, you know, like I said, it, it's been hard to get a look at what particular thing because I go so quickly from like relatively calm to you know pretty freaking angry <laughs> so um and I know like who I'm mad at what I'm mad at I'm mad because I'm screwing up and because this person is telling me you're getting it wrong and I hate that like that's the simplest explanation <laughs> like it's the worst thing that could happen <laughs> like I don't want to screw up I don't want to hear somebody else telling me I did that it's like like screws with my brain <laughs> so um but what they said was that once you uh, discover a trigger and, and I think this relates to purging if there's some kind of confusion about what I'm getting at but you come across triggers all the time in life and they make us go through changes like this one is the anger one and I've been going through changes with it a long time like I hope this is you know eking me closer to getting this figured out because I am not down with the crazy spray <laughs> like it's not good um but will run across them and those are like those points in life where it's like oh time to deal with this issue or problem or whatever however you want to term it just the next milestone that you got to deal with on your spiritual path or or in life you know same kind of same thing kind of <clears throat> and so i mean shouldn't be surprised knowing that and i kind of already did know that I don't know, it's kind of like, it's not okay to tell me I'm messing up, but it's okay to make me aware of these other things, like, oh, now that makes me able to make more sense of what I already know. <laughs> but, um, let's see, what did I write? Broadcasting, collecting, processing, oh, broadcasting, collecting, processing. So we threw them out, and then we come upon them, collect them, and then we process them. And we go through whatever changes they put us through. Cats as barometers. I had this cat named Moo that died uh, last summer. And with him came this realization one day. So Moo and the realization, a phrase heard in my head, I remember today repeating it aloud as a query my cat is here to help me learn sensitivity and to fine-tune my emotional crazy spray or the anger because thank goodness they're here because I mean I have a, another cat now and he's the same way and it's more so with this guy that you see how if, if you're speaking in anger you can tell that it affects them 
they will look at you and it's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't want you to give me that look. I'm sorry. Like it makes me immediately aware that like, ooh, something icky is coming out of me. And um, subsequently, as usually happens, I will have some realization and then I'll see some video on YouTube that'll confirm that and that did happen. This was a couple of years ago uh, that this happened with Moo because I had Moo for probably about 14 years, maybe longer. I, was, I wasn't counting. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and... We, he, he died and it was like a very painful experience and every time I'm reminded of it I just kind of want to curl up and die um, and then I have this other cat now I actually got him when I had Moo as well and that was part of why Moo like passed away because he just wanted to be the only cat and just like he was old you know, he had to be like 21, 22. He was like pretty up there. And he just couldn't handle it. And this other kitty, I, I pretty much manifested that cat because I wanted another cat for a company for Moo. I didn't realize until too late that like that was not at all what he wanted. He wanted to be the only guy. <clears throat> and he kept like kicking himself out and like the other the new kitten was like I, hi I want to play I want to make friends with you and Moo was like get the hell away from me he was like not happy and I had to keep going and retrieving him or he would go to my neighbor's house which was upstairs and he was like sickly and he she has like a bunch of dogs and that's where he would go and I was like oh my god what did I I felt like I did something to him, but what I did to him was introduce this other cat. So then he passed away and I have this other cat now. He's a year old or a little bit more than a year old. Anyway, he, um, same thing. Like he lets me know what's going on with me if <laughs> it's not good right away. and. <clears throat> I'm thankful for that because apparently I need it. <laughs> um, but it really got me thinking about like how getting to the bottom of what our issues are works, you know, and how obvious things can be and yet we can still be so blind to what's happening and be aware of it too, which <laughs> is... <clears throat> mind pretzel <laughs> so um what does that have to do with all of this I'm all I can say is that to me they all seem to point to again <clears throat> going deep and um seeing like true things about yourself and that's, of course, that comes, the ability to do that comes when we're able to say, I hey, you know what, this is on me, I'm responsible for this. And uh, understanding not only how our feelings affect us, but those around us, like me and the poor kitty, like, I, I feel like, I feel terrible about Moo. Like, I thought I was doing something nice for him, and it was... He hated it. He hated it so much and made him sick and he didn't want to be here. Literally and figuratively and ow, I didn't want to do that to him. I loved him. I, well, I still love him. He's my kitty. And it's just um, a reminder also another in an, another way of a reminder for me to realize like those strong feelings like anger even if they're not directed at the individual in the room with you can still negatively affect them and 
we have that going on all around us. I mean, we can take it to the macro and make it all about ourselves or we can widen our lens and get up higher and get an eagle eye view, a broader perspective and see how the same thing that's affecting you, some version of it is also going to be affecting people not directly associated with you. That's just the way it works. Like, I guess we're not very uh, inventive. <laughs> like we go back to the well a lot. Or I don't know. Like maybe it's the... We have to... All of us... Like with the shooting things, all of us have to be affected personally by something before it has real meaning to us. And I feel like that's kind of the perspective that I see looking at these situations where <laughs> we are not seeing eye to eye. And it's actually not the safest situations, but I mean, that comes with it that comes with life comes with the territory safe is <laughs> safe is subjective <laughs> well it is you know like if you don't feel like you're in danger well you're probably not gonna attract a dangerous situation to yourself and well I think that takes some tuning as well because you can go along happy-go-lucky like the fool about to walk off the cliff with his little dog, but you should probably have some situational awareness. Like, you can't just be all bumbling, bumbling along like, you know, nothing can touch you. Well, that's true. Nothing can touch you, but sometimes things can touch you so hard that you or get touched right out of life and if you're okay with that being part of the game, part of the plan then go for it. Jump off that cliff or just walk off and don't even think about it. But in other cases you can have a same version of that carefree trust that you're just going to be okay no matter what but also uh, have that situational awareness, like maybe cut down on some risks that you, I mean, it could be fun, but you could also pass that up too, you know, as part of your life path plan, game plan situation. I think that's all that I have to say about that. Um, watch out, like maybe how you're saying stuff around and to people, though, if you care, because we're not cats. Sometimes you'll see stuff affect us, but we're not going to necessarily reflect stuff, obviously or immediately, so it's up to us, if we care, to get a rain on that kind of thing. Like, I care, and I... I'm in situations lately where I'm like, <clears throat> I don't know, like drunk Godzilla, just like smashing through stuff by accident. And I didn't mean to do that, kick over that building with 340 people in it. I mean, that's what it feels like sometimes. I know it's not that bad, but I don't know, something to think about. I'm sure there's a version of that in everybody's life that they can draw a comparison to or a similarity with. A thank you and good night. <laughs>